What up, YouTube? This is Getty Video back at you with another video. I want to give a double salute to all of my supporters and anyone watching this video right now. And if you're new here, please like, comment, subscribe, and join the Getty Gang. Why don't you let's get to the content? Okay, man, y'all remember there was a time when a lot of NBA players was trying to be gangster rappers, right? They was saying that when the ball players want to be rappers and the rappers want to be ball players. Why? Because what comes along with the rappers? The rappers get to glorify the street dudes. Well, Wack 100 and DJ Academics is having a conversation about Big Meech, Tammy, his release, third party cooperation, snitching the whole nine yards, man. And what comes up in the conversation is LeBron James putting up a post welcoming Big Meech home. And Wack 100 says, considering the fact that a lot of children look up to and are influenced by LeBron James, he should never appear to glorify a drug dealer. It is interesting. I'm going to let y'all get to it shout out to wag 100 shout out to dj academics this is getty radio let's go okay i'm, I'm talking about big meech i think you and a lot of people have said that there might have been cooperation through a third party, which that's the first time I've ever heard. Yeah, Tammy, Tammy, the Tammy Town. Yeah. Okay. That was Blue Da Vinci broad at first. You know that, right? Really? Yeah, that was his broad, right? So um l here's the thing. Okay, let me let me look. Let oh, okay, me, break it up, please. Let me, let me break it up. Big B's just parole, right? Yes. And he paroled to Fort Lauderdale to his son's little me to his baby mama, right? Okay. Let's establish that. The first person had Big Me's life rights is a dude named Cuffy okay. from St. Louis, right? Okay. All right. Cuffy is the one that took Big Me to a whole nother level, money-wise, all that. He was what he was. So the guy with Cuffy, everything went up three, four hundred percent. So when Meech is in there and he sent word through Tammy, because now that's his bro, to holler at Cuffy to make a move, he makes a move. He makes a move. Federal agents come in. Cool. Come time for court, CI cooperate number one gets on the stand. CI number one is Tammy. Mm. It's also stipulated in the documents that CI number one is also the new owner of the of the BMF rights on Big B side. Now, here goes the thing. Fifty Cent had to do the business with who? Tammy. Really? Why? If you know this woman right here, that's Joe Brog, is getting on the stand as a third party cooperate against your old man Cuffy, why does she got your life rights? Why don't your baby mama that you just paroled to got your life rights? Why don't your son got your life rights? Your sister, your mama, your daddy, your brother. Because she has to cooperate for a reason working for you. Now, remember back in 1617 when they said Big Me Song get out early? Mm -hmm. Hold on. That, that, that was all it is but she, the federal agent they pulled it off the table it's all in the work Wait, it's going to tell you CI number one is the dude owes the life rights to Big Beach and be a bad bro but by the way, I, I'm I, I'm looking at a Vlad TV um, thumbnail. It says Tanisha Welch. I don't know who that is. It says Big Meech sold his life rights to a piece of shit informant. Really? Bro, that listen, hey, listen, ain't no soul, nothing. It's her. And right now, if you go look at the red carpet events, Google it. You'll see her. Who? Tammy? Nigga, Google it. Yeah, yeah that's kind of crazy, though. Ain't no kind of yeah, crazy. Yeah, Nigga, it's only one reason why. Is that a know. thing, though? Could you, like, but is that snitching, though? Because, yo, I, by the way, and, and I listen. Yeah, that's snitching. Yeah, third part. That's how the niggas in the feds is getting out. Watch this, right? Look, look. I'm already in there, right? At, mm -hmm. You come in. Yeah. I'm in there with 50 years. You come in. I befriend you, get to know you, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh -huh. I'm like, yeah, man, you know, I still got a few teams out there doing their thing. You see, I'm doing all right for myself in here. Uh -huh. You're like, yeah, man, I got a thousand motherfucking bricks. I got buried such and such. But I, you know, shit, I ain't got, I don't trust none of my people, but shit, you know, we could work something. All right, well, let me get you 10 bricks up front. And then you move in, we keep moving them, right? Boom. I call R&B. 
R&B, listen, you got a thousand bricks, right? Contact your folks, let them know they had, well, I didn't agree to move them for him. This is what it's going to be, boom, boom, boom. Ask them, you know, if I move the majority of the bricks, how much time they'd knock off of my end. All right, baby, they said for every month, 100 bricks you move, they're going to take seven years, eight years, 10 years off, whatever. She's my third party cooperate. And let me ask you, let me ask you this question. So, so he, so he was given 30 years because, because I think this is a counter argument. He was given 30 years, right? Yeah. So if, if he got locked up in 2005, 30 years would have been him getting out in 2035, right? 85%. Okay, and, and 85% of that would have been maybe... 25 and a half. Okay, exactly. So so, so he would have got out in 2030. 24, 24 at best. Okay, so... so, so Let's say half, six months off of the halfway house, a year he didn't took the little drug program for 24 years. He got out in 19 years. He out five years or six years or five years yeah. or and I and I guess that's what the counter argument is though uh, I'm whack why would somebody cooperate for only five years off the whole point of cooperating is to be like Lou Da Vinci did a safety valve for eight months off what you mean what's the safety valve <clears throat> that's a whole nother story but listen anybody that says why would somebody cooperate for only five years off is a motherfucker that ain't never did no prison time. Oh. After 19, 20 years, that five years is a motherfucking eternity. And when you 56 years old, that's the difference between 56 and 62. Is it still only five years off? Now, he his third party cooperation didn't bring him home early. He's not home early on no telling. I got the paperwork on why he's home early. Yeah. I ain't gonna put no bullshit on him, but I just sent you to work on why he's home early. Uh, now his third party cooperation was trying to get him home early back in sixteen seventeen. So okay, we're in twenty four. So that means I had to put him home early seven eight years early than now. So why he's home early now? You have the paperwork on. That's legit. Mm. You're so, looking at it. So wait, so would you consider him a cooperative then? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, 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 you know, he did this. All he got to do is go to Cam Capone, interview with uh, Blue Da Vinci, and no, I see he called in from the feds. Oh, I played it, I played it. Like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, it is what it is. And here goes the thing. Ain't nobody going to do nothing to him and do nothing about it. And I don't think hey, all these BMF dudes is out here waiting to think he's going to go get a million bricks. That man, 56 years old, he didn't have to do a thing or two to come home early, right? He, he got his son in position, right? He got a relationship with 50 Cent. He has a whole nother spinoff of doing a whole fucking TV series of going to jail, uh, fighting the case, and doing 19 years and what that was like. And then he could take the BMF thing and go do a full-blown movie and license that motherfucker out to 50, 60 different goddamn countries and spin off and go into real estate or whatever. You will never see that dude hustling in the street ever again. He 56, bro. Yeah, well, hey, well he shouldn't. I'm going to be honest with you. I've never seen hip-hop. LeBron James said, welcome home, big me. I've never seen... Yeah, that was crazy. The, 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 the culture, or, or uh, black culture has welcomed him home, like, almost but get, like... Get, but, but see, like I'm going to tell you what's fight. wrong with that. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with that. <clears throat> see, if I say it, I sound like a hater. <clears throat> but now, LeBron, you know, respectfully, what you've just done is all the kids have been watching you and 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 looking at you and looking at your son because of the sports and 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 watching you do these things with the school programs and, and the best in schools and all these things now they just saw you welcome home a guy that they don't know and now the kids are googling and now they just seen lebron james glorify and salute a drug dealer now, I know it sounds crazy coming out of my mouth, but we having grown man conversation, right? Wait, 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 hold on. All right, all right, so let me ask you this, right? Because th that's what I was also telling my chat earlier. I said... It's crazy. It don't even look right. Wait, wait, wait. Let me ask you, though. Let me ask you, because you're older than me. You would definitely know way more than me. But by, by how many people are welcoming him back 
it feels like he meant more to the black community than than only being a drug dealer. Like, I don't know if he's. he's I, I don't know what you act. Act. Look, I don't give a fuck what you mean more to, right? Uh, let's take uh, Frank Lucas and the rest of these drug kingpin dudes. And he wasn't on their level, but he was up there, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't give a fuck. Let's just be real. And I got to speak on this because I saw my man, Captain Kazariat, who part of the Hebrew Israelites, speak on it. Listen, they passed out turkeys. Okay, they brought some people with some cars. They took, took care of some people in the projects. But everything was done, right? By what? By the genocide of act of flooding the motherfucking streets with some shit that was cancerous to our people called a drug, right? So you can say what you want to say, bro, about that. But when you come from being a drug kingpin and you say you looked out for people, you more people up than you looked out for. Mm. So when you got a guy like LeBron of his magnitude and his stature, say welcome home, big meat. The only defense I can give LeBron is hopefully he's referring to the reestablish the the you know <laughs> the big meats that that let's say is the is the gonna turn into a movie star, a TV star, but you know, when he does that, it makes the people that follow him and look up to him say, okay, well, who's this guy? And when they go read about him, they say, damn, LeBron's saluting and big up in the drug dealer. Is it cool to be a drug dealer? Shit, LeBron likes him. Hey, right? You, no, you're right. Did you see what Rollo it's said? Real Rollo was sending a message to Big Niche. He said, the streets is dead, OG. Get this legal money. Stay out, the, stay out these f niggas' way. Don't even worry about what a f niggas say. Most of these so-called street niggas ain't even made a million out of the dope game, but they always talking street shit. Well, you got to remember because they put Rollo over there with the rats too, right? Am I right? That's the dude they, they had the phone call and they allegedly say he told. I don't know too much about the dude, so, you know, but he's telling the dude the truth. Nobody cares, right? Um, the, the people that's being exposed as rats are getting bigger after they expose as rats. Yeah. Nobody cares. The stronghold of the streets are gone. You're going to have a few renegades still out there. But right now, it's probably about a good 65-35 in favor of the cooperate. Even in jail. Three out of the five prison yards in jail in California are ran by cooperates. Wow. Hey, by the way, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I think when he comes out, the, the last thing I want to see him do is go on that, inter, that interview circuit. I think he needs to drop a movie just like how we saw American Gangster. Like I I feel like the culture no. wants that. Yeah. He need to do that, then do the do the interview circuit to promote the movie. But like, no, bro, he I'm gonna got be honest with you. I've only Act. heard stories about like like I heard someone tell a story about how he brought his two Maybachs to a club and boxed in um um Jay Z's Maybach. I'm like, wow, this guy really had it. I don't yeah, know. that was uh that was um Benny Boone told that story. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, no, he had it. The niggas was doing like 2,500 bricks a week and crazy shit. He had it. Hey, no, he, he had it. There ain't no, there's, there's no exaggeration about what you hear. Wait, you know, just flying over parks and helicopters and throwing out money and, you know, going to the club and shutting the club, buying the bar. He had it. There, there's no questioning or doubt in that. It's just about the things that happen after the fact. Um, you know, that's that's in question. All right, we're going to leave it right there. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this audio, man. Wack 100, DJ Academic, man, having an epic conversation about Big Meats, third-party cooperation, Tammy Cuffy, the BMF case, the BMF movie, Big Meach is released, the whole nine yards, man. And Big Meach is home, man. And I will say this, man. Meach is not going to get himself involved in any kind of street mess, man. I don't think Big Meach is that dumb of a person. Big Meach don't strike me as a monk tune. Big Meach don't strike me as a lot of these guys that end up getting out like Young Thug's brother on funk.
they get out of jail, skated, right? Should be in prison still for doing more time, right? Because Meech actually, right, got 30 years. So he did 19 of the 30. He came out pretty good when it comes down to that, right? I don't think he's going to get out of jail like a lot of these other guys on phone. Young Thug's brother out hanging in the same spot on Cleveland Avenue at the store with a pistol in the door of the truck, right? Got caught on camera. Now he's back in prison for nine years, man. I don't think Big Meech is going to put himself on any kind of corner any kind of block any kind of drug deal get on the phone with any cartel member that he may have been dealing with or any cartel ties that he may still be able to reach out to why because he is big meats man everybody knows he can probably do it again i don't think he's gonna do that man i don't think he's that dumb he's got a bag waiting for him already been getting the bag through the bmf series ben got a bag through selling his life rights 250 cent by way of his cooperant right his informant that everybody keeps reminding us of tammy right i don't think he's gonna jump down in that rabbit hole again right so i think meach is gonna be safe in that when it comes down to his decision making because He's got 50 Cent on his side, man. 50's gonna guide him through all of that, man. And ain't no telling how many series, spinoffs, documentaries can come out of this, man. The money is gonna be endless. Is it gonna be BMF money? No, but it will be money that he can sustain and live a great life for the rest of his life into his 60s and 70s, however long he's gonna live after his release, right? So what about LeBron James, man? Speaking about Big Meech, man, I do think it's kinda out of pocket, man, but we gotta understand, man, rappers want to be ball players ball players want to be rappers rappers want to be street dudes y'all you gotta remember that man that was the whole moniker back in the day like back in the day man in the 90s and things like that when rap was really blowing up right the rappers were really talking about the street dude the street dudes looked at the rappers like they were corny to be honest with you right because the rappers was telling the stories of the dudes that was really out there in the streets putting in the work you understand what i'm saying it kind of reversed now but lebron james looked at it like he wants to be an mc he wants to be a rapper there's songs and lyrics that glorify and big up big meech man rick ross has one of the famous songs like bmf right i think i'm big meech larry hoover getting money hallelujah right that's one of the biggest songs in hip-hop about big meech right there right so LeBron James is probably looking at this thing like he's a hip hop fan and he's just bigging him up because he done heard so much about Big Meech. He don't know Big Meech. LeBron is too young to know anything really about what Big Meech and him was doing back in the day. He only heard the stories. But I do agree with WAC 100 on this, man. LeBron James should not have said anything about Big Meech's release. LeBron James shouldn't have said anything about Meech's release unless he's going to use it as a public service announcement to tell children, right, or to deter children from living the thug life, to deter children from being gangsters, to deter children from being thugs, and use that as an opportunity opportunity for a public service announcement to pretty much say hey look at what happened to Meech if you go out there and you live your life like that this can end up happening to you he should have used it as an opportunity to give a positive message to the kids because what it looks like is that he's glorifying Big Meech man listen in this community we got to stop bigging people up glorifying people just because they came home from prison that is not a college degree all right congratulations you survived all right because prison is rough depending on where you are, depending on the kind of time you're doing. Prison is hard, depending on what kind of time you're doing, depending on why you're in there, depending on your affiliations and things like that, especially if you're a square, right? But Big Meech was all right in prison, I promise you that. Nobody bothered him, but we gotta start bigging people up for coming home for doing things that they shouldn't have been doing in the first place. We get it, Big Meech is a celebrity because his lifestyle, his drug dealer lifestyle made him a celebrity, right? Why? Because in our culture of hip hop, we glorify those things. We glorify the drug dealing. We glorify the violence. We glorify the negativity. We glorify the dysfunction, man. It just is what it is, man. And LeBron James is no different than anybody else, but he is an athlete. He is a role model, whether he wants to accept the role or not. People with impressionable minds, like children, anybody 25 years and under, are gonna look up to what he's doing, what he's bigging up, what he's supporting, and who he's shouting out, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section, man. This has been Getty Video. I appreciate you being here. Please like, comment, subscribe. I will catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.